Are you excited? It's getting toward the end of the year and uh, Christmas is coming and all these different things that start to, to unfold. How fast has this year? Yeah, like it's just... And we'll be all, all the way at the end of... I mean, there's only like seven weeks of school left and all these interesting things and um, most of you are out of school, I've noticed. <laughs> Wendy, she's still in school. <laughs> But what will happen is, um, you know, our Christmas event will come along and I'm thinking the light of the world, this is, Cammie talked to me the other day and she said, this is what I really feel like. And so it really spoke to me, you know, and I listened to different people at different times and you sort of hear God whispering into your life about different things. And um, most people don't really understand that you have to hear God's voice. In, in the small moments, uh, rather than the chit-chat of ideas. It's like God, you just, you hear God. And I think this is what's important for us um, as a church. This morning I'm going to speak through a few different passages, but the, but the first one that I've got is a familiar passage. You are the light of the world. So Jesus is talking to his disciples and he, had, he was the light, Jesus, the light of the world. And then he's saying, now you are the light of the world. So he transferred that in that moment to team Jesus, if you will. Now, this, those disciples, this is the Beatitudes right in the beginning of Matthew where he's trying to explain to them, you are now the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. So he's then trying to bring in some examples. For, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now see this, this last bit. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. So the good things that you're going to do through your life and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus lived in a totally different age than we're living in now. Now this is important. Team Jesus administered in a culture of God awareness. Um, it was a whole different deal. Now, this picture up here is not necessarily a good picture, but it's AI generated. Now, we're living in an age where things are going to change rapidly in Australia, throughout the world. You know, those things that you think are true are not necessarily true at all. And they can be generated in ways that, are, you know, even words, um, sermons, they'll come through AI. Just you wait and see. It's on, it's on the way. And you won't know the difference because somebody will read something and, and it'll just sound wonderful. And it'll get better and better and better and better and better. And you say, no, I can discern the difference. Probably not. So we're living in a totally different age than Je Je that Jesus has talked about. So he's talking to them. They had a God awareness in that culture. So could, he could speak about it and say, like, the good things you're going to do, people are going to see what you do, and they're going to give glory to your Father in heaven. There's a shift. I think the, the same adage goes for us. You are the light of the world. And we need to understand the shifts in our nation and what's happening all around us in order for us to, 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 to see that people are going to see different things about what takes place. I think living in Australia in 2024, if I was just trying to bring it into now, I planted a church in 2004, which was 20 years ago. Nothing is the same today. All those things, that's not that long ago, 2004. It's this millennia, it's this age, and yet everything has changed. All of the different technologies, everything that people, you know, all the advancements, the way young people are seeing things, the impact of COVID, all of this stuff has changed everything, that the, the, the perspective on the entire world and what's taking place. But it's becoming an increasingly secular society. So the, the God awareness is diminishing. 
There are entire families that do not have conversations about God. In fact, there will be fathers that will tell children, God is a figment of your imagination. And children are going to be raised like that. And so when you think about the good deeds that you do, you think, well, people will praise my Father in heaven. No. There's a shift that's happening. Our nation is going through this massive change. We've thrown out, you know, the truth of the gospel right across our country. And there's pockets of activity. But it's shifting. And I think, I think it's, 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 it's all about me and my accomplishments. If I was to try and put something, some sort of summary, we're being told, you, you've got to go and make something of yourself. And, and it's about what I can accomplish in life. And we've become an individual society. In, a society of individual. Now I can become a YouTube sensation. And that, that, that could be a real calling in life. And it's the universe that's calling me. The, call, the, the universe is aligned for me. This is, this is what's being told. And, and the universe is helping. This is a common um, statement. The universe. I remember growing up, I'd never heard this before. So this is new. This is something that's been developed. And, 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 and the, the God awareness in families is shift, has shifted. That, that God is, is no longer prominent. Um, and, and, and so the, this is now, so many people, I think atheism, the rise of atheism was that there's no such thing as God. But people realize there's something working in my favor. And so now it's, we, we, they've pinned on this, the universe is helping me. In my thinking is you, you will get more help from your dog. I mean, your dog will look after you. Universe doesn't even know you exist. But we have a whole nation that is believing this. And it's a shift because of our God, the God awareness in our nation. But I want to give you one thing that I've observed that I think is super, 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 super important. And that has changed since 2004. I believe the family has become more important. Not less important, more important. There was a shift. There was a change where... It really became about my circle of friends. Like that was, you know, my friends were really important. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm watching. I'm listening to stories. I'm looking online. I'm looking at what people are grabbing. Family is increasing in value. This is a good thing. Right? This, this is a God factor. The, the, the importance of family. So families aren't diminishing. Families are becoming more and more important. And I think that for us, we need to look at this. Because when, when you sit there and you go, everything is getting really bad. And you, you can only just po listen to politics. And, and everything else is going on and you're all worried about it. I want you to see this. There's something happening. Family is still key in our thinking in this country. And so we need to grab hold of this. And we're trying to understand being the light of the world. Church in Australia, 2024. I think we long to return to a God awareness in our, in our nation. I think that would be, you know, we're, we're longing for that. And, and within, you know, our thinking, we will return to this. Like as if we've been taken into exile, but we will return and reclaim this. But we run the same programs um, right across churches. So we basically aren't really shifting anything we continue to do, in, as a nation, we continue to operate the same way that we, we've always have, especially for the last 30, 40 years. Um, yes, we try and do things to meet people's needs, but we're realizing that that isn't having the same impact that it had when we, they sort of started the, to, to initiate things. But one of the things I've really noticed is increasing government and secular distractions. And, and, and what I mean by this is um, the, 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 the world is being, or our, and our nation and our people and our communities are leaving God out of the equation and they're trying to interpret life without God. Psychology has become really important. 
So now you can psychoanalyze one another and you can know everything about everybody's family and why everything's wrong in their family, but not with God in the, in the, in the conversation. And th- this is where I think there's a shift. But the increasing government, um, the, the distractions, the blue cards, um, that became just, you had to have a blue card. It was, you know, mandatory. Anybody can get a blue card. When you look at the criteria of how this works, this was the government trying to control something that was a problem and it's never been solved. My, my thinking is that, you know, pedophilia was so bad that the government reaction was that somehow or other we've got to be able to head off this problem and so we would put in blue cards and, 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 and it was a real shift. And so now, but what I think has happened is it's really a matter of increasing administration in churches for all, in, in all sorts of areas. So the government is, they'll go, there's a problem here. Um, they, they, they don't actually see things from a God perspective. They see things from a secular perspective. Churches, we think that we've got a wonderful reputation, but there's people out there, there's fathers that are telling children that, that, that churches are, you know, pedo rings there's like it's just these are bad places and yet it was it was right throughout our nation in in clubs and and all sorts of you know swimming clubs and coaches and all these different things it's it's it was it was a problem but the blue cards have not solved the problem it's just now just an added area of you know information what I, one of the things I was looking at was um, and why I say churches won't change, or churches, you know, struggle to put in. Go to the Roman Catholic Church, and, and it's been told over and over and over and again that they are one of the, one of the, they have the, one of the biggest problems is with their priests, and they say, introduce marriage into your priesthood, and they won't do it. They've never done it. And yet people have, there's been statistics that have said, this changes everything. And it, but it will reduce numbers. They will not change. They have not changed. And not, so this is what I'm thinking. In, in 2024, you've got all these problems in society. Everybody's trying to help. Everybody's trying to micromanage stuff. We actually don't change, but churches can adapt. If we would learn a lesson from this, we're, we're not that particular ch- organization, we don't have that particular problem, but churches need to adapt. And, and I think this is what, in, 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 a, in a time of 2024, that um, we can't be so stubborn that we won't go, there's a major problem, you know, and, and there's something that we can do, and this is a solution. And, and I think just taking an example, because I'm not trying to beat up the Roman Catholic Church. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, what I'm saying is, is that that is a good example of something that they could, the, the foundations and the fundamental organizational structure of the Catholic Church could be changed. They will not do it. But I think this is, this is like the sort of thing is, we, if we're the light of the world and people are going, look at your good deeds and they're going to give praise to our Father in heaven, uh, they have looked at this church and said, it's not a good thing. So church isn't necessary. And, and, and when people consider churches in the, in the community, we're all lumped into the same category. Um, you know, they, the, the communities will, 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 it's not like, oh, no, but they're, they're, they're a different kind of church. No, nope, no. Nope. There's a stigma in society about how people see the church. And it's wrong. But we need to recognize that this isn't 2004. This isn't 1964. So much has changed and, and we need to be mindful of this that we've got increased, because we think we can solve all the problems. And, the, and like I said, and the government thinks they can solve the problems. But they, they, they get so mixed up. I mean, I was just laughing at them this week. Um, Tim Tams cost more in England than they do here. And so the government wants to do something about it and reprimand Coles and Woolworths. Who cares? All the problems the government's got and they're worried about Tim Tams. 
Come on now. So what I'm saying is this is what's happening. People focus on nonsense. And, and they get all their knickers out of it in, in, in a knot trying to worry about stuff. that Who cares if people buy Tim Tams in Australia? I don't. The cost, you know, people are smart. They'll figure stuff out. If they want them, they'll get them. But people are, governments often try to control environments because they're distracted. You realize how distracted we are as a nation? Look at how many people are on their phones all the time. We are, this, that didn't exist 20 years ago. That didn't exist, that problem. So people, the distractions are causing confusion. The increase in this, this, this secular nation, and it's, in, it's increasing. God is being left out of the equation. We think, we think we're going to return to that. And I think that's what the church has longed for. And we just sit there. I think we have, we're, we, we're fixated on our, our nation will return to this. But if you look at where we come from, and I think we need to look at Scripture. I, need, I think we need to look at Scripture and let Scripture inform us about the timelines of God and, and, and how God is involved in all sorts of things. Always has been. You see? But there was the captivity in Babylon, you know, so the people from Jerusalem, Babylon came in and captured Jerusalem and took the people into captivity. It took them in different waves. But the time period was uh, 597 to 538 BC. Obviously, when you count backwards, you know, there was, you know, 100 BC, 200 BC. You come back the other way, it's 200 BC, 100 BC, you know, before Christ. That's the numbers. There's about 70 years in there. Jeremiah the prophet had said, this is going to happen. We have, we have we had, we've got these problems and you're, we're going into captivity for 70 years. And people said, no, 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 nothing bad will ever happen to us. It might be a, a year or two. And, um, and we'll, this will all be resolved. But the, if you look at, if you, I'm looking at the o- overarching problem, and that was that the Jewish culture ignored the meta-narrative of God. So the, not only just the narrative of God, the story of God, but the bigger story of God and how they were involved and they were, they were told who they were as a people, they stopped telling the story to their children. They, 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 it was like some reforms under Josiah when they was, oh, hang on, we've got scriptures about this. We've actually written this stuff down. You know, and, and they were in a time where they were just telling stories and they were interpreting the past without looking at the scriptures. And then, then idols seeped into their culture this took hundreds of years to, to, to smash their culture. It wasn't something that, that was a slippery slope. It, it gradually took hold of their entire nation. And the priesthood, the, 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 the church themselves, instead of being you know, in the temple, the worship to God, it was mixed up. And, and their priesthood was, was in, in total disarray. God just let the Babylonians come in and take them into captivity for 70 years. So I'm going to go into that period because the people are looking at it and going, we're in captivity. And uh, we know this song, By the Rivers of Babylon. We sat and wept when we remembered Zion. This is written after they got back out of captivity. So somebody wrote this after that period. But they're reflecting on... Man, when we were there in Babylon, when we were there as a people, they're, they're on the poplars. So these, on these particular trees that were there, we hung our harps. So we put our harps up there. And for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. And they said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? You know, that's what they're thinking. It's like, what can we do here? This is not where we're supposed to be. We, can't, we don't even want to play our harps. Let's just put them up because we, we don't know what to do. And, and they were like, they were crying. They were, they were weeping because of we're here. And it wasn't through, through faults of individuals. It was the whole culture of the nation that got them there. 
So it wasn't just one person in isolated, with, with isolated problems that were the bad guys. It was the whole nation. And, and so they were, this, is, this is written in Psalms. And this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to, to all those I carried in exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. So this is going into Jeremiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to all, all those I carried into exile. Her God arranged this. The Babylonians had risen in prominence and they intended to come in and take Jerusalem, but God was part of this. In fact, he led the way. He said, I took them. I took those people into captivity. And, um, and we often, we, we thought, well, well, that doesn't even make sense. Why would God have his chosen people and, and, and take them into captivity for 70 years in, in Babylon? And this is what he's saying to them. God is saying to these people, you're in captivity. You're there. Instead of sitting by the river and, and crying your eyes out about how bad things are and being incapacitated, this is what I want you to do. Build houses, settle down, plant garden, gardens and eat what they produce. He was, this is an, an objective thing. You can do this. Why are you sitting around the river crying about how things used to be? Because they're, they're thinking back to Jerusalem and going, you know, it used to be so good once upon a time. We, everything was so good and all we can do now is just cry. And God's saying, get with it. I've led you here. Build houses. Plant the gardens and eat what they produce. And it, was, it was just a very basic thing for them to do. It's like, you're there for a season. You're not coming out of there. This is what you can do. And I think that it's like this. So I've put this in, 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 uh, in slanted writing here. Adapt your life to suit current circumstances. So for us, as a church, and we're trying, we're trying to be the light of the world, Right? That's, the, that's the objective, Team Jesus. That's where, that's where I started <laughs> all this, right? It's like, we need to learn to adapt. And it, remember I told you that there are organizations, massive organizations such as you know, Catholic Church, they won't adapt because they can't. We can. We can learn to adapt because if you look at Scripture, this was, this was an important thing to do was you're there for this season. Make the most of it. You know, I've got this. And, and I think that's for us as we're trying to be the light of the world. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. So they're thinking, why would we want to have children in this land? Because it's, it's there's a terrible future. And God said, no, just get on with it. Marry, have children. This is, what, this is the instructions from God for these people that are in captivity. God will, and I think this is God wants you to understand the increasing importance of family of this, today. I think this is a message for us. The increasing importance of family. Family was being smashed, and there's a re, there's a reorientation in society, even within this secular society, of the importance of family. But here, as a church, we need to be reminded that the family that you have is is, is been a gift of God. I mean, everybody that you've got, the family that you have, not the family you wished you had. This is a gift of God, the family that you have. And I think that we need to understand the increasing importance of family going in, in, in this age of 2024, but realizing that, you know, we're part of this. So whatever family you belong to, there's increasing importance of the family you have, not the family you think you should have had, the family you have now. Now, this is important for us because we're trying to figure out the light of the world and, and we've forgotten the importance of family. And culture now, and I'm telling you it's happening, 
They see the value in family. When they, look at the, when they look at the church, they need to be able to see something different about the church. There's something how we interact as family members. And just the way things are. And we've got a whole culture out there that's struggling with family. Family, there's so many problems and so many issues and how they're trying to hold families together. And us as, as a church, we need to see that God has placed us in these circumstances that we are in right now. We're in this for a season. You know, he, his timing is everything. You know, what he will bring about, the changes that he will bring about, God is, hasn't given over control to us to make changes. He's just, he just gives us a word. And God gives us a word that says, get on with this. And I, I think that's the word for us. Also, seek the peace and this, this, check this out. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which, to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Have we thought about this? Praying for our community. You know, like, look at this. Focus on being the light of the world. Don't focus on the problems of the world. No, honestly, if we could have a list of this drama, that drama, this has gone wrong, this has gone wrong. Focus on being the light of the world. You are Team Jesus. You, there's a calling on your life. You are Team Jesus. You are the light of the world. There's a reason why you exist right now. There's a reason why you're here this morning. And God wants to give you a word. You are the light of the world. And, and so for us, focus, focus on that. Focus on being the light of the world and, 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 and realize that there's, there's something that we can do. God hears our prayers for community and it will change how it will grow. And we're looking at, at, at the community going, there's so many dramas. Pray for it. Pray for these kids. You know, we're talking about youth crime. We're talking about dramas with, um, you know, family abuse and all sorts of stuff. Pray. We, we, we can pray for the community. If you pray for the community, you too will prosper. If, if we get our eyes off ourselves and put our eyes on the fact that God is still God, the fact that this community is saying that, that there is no God, it doesn't, make, it, it, it doesn't make it legitimate. It just makes it a falsehood that they've actually believed in. But they'll believe in anything. You, they'll talk kids into believing into fairies. They will. But what about God? And so for us, it's pray for our community. So pray for the city that you act. What am I going to do? Pray, 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 pray. And if you can't pray, pray some more. Yeah, well, that, will change. that won't change anything. It will. It will. And you get the benefits from this. Just little short prayers sometimes. Because, I mean, it's, it's so easy to get worried about everything that's going on and try to analyze this and why this has fallen apart. And, oh, if I just return to God. And they're not. And yet we can pray. You are the light of the world. So rather than expecting change to happen there, change happens here. To where we say this is something foundational in our lives, wherever we are. Whatever your station is, whatever your situation in life is, right this second, stop worrying about the problems. Start worrying about the prayers. And we, we can do this. For I know, this is God, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You need this. This is God speaking to these people that had go, gone into captivity. And they were, they're sitting there, oh, well, let's just put our harps up because it's just too much trouble and nobody really wants to listen to our songs anyway. Get your harps out of the tree and get to playing with them. Hey, because you, that's where you are. Rather than that, rather, I wish we could go back to where we once were. You're now here. 
This is where God has our nation. And you are very much a part of this mix. God wants you to align your thinking. And, and, and it, this is my way of saying this. All right, this isn't scripture. God wants you to align your thinking. It's God is, I've got this. So God has got this. And you will do well. God's got this. Think about what's going on. What has been your worries? Give it to God. It's his world. You are the light in the world. The change that he's brought about in your life. You see things that other people do not see. Your perspective is different. Your starting point is different. Your starting point is God. You've got you've got a nation all around you where the starting point is nothing. No wonder there's problems. This all came about because of nothing, that nothing happened and somehow or other we've got the whole world here. And we, we go, no, it's God. You've got to start with God. And everything makes sense when you start with God. Nothing makes sense when you start with nothing. <clears throat> we are witnessing an age of increased captivity. Now, this is really important because um, you're like, let me get out of this age. Uh, I, I need a holiday. I need a break. But, this, but we, we've, sometimes we forget, like, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. But Satan is having this wow of a time messing with, this, with society. And it's increasing. People are buying into it. And it's, and it's, so it's not just, your battle is not just against dramas coming from a different way, but there's, there's principalities and powers. There are things, at, there are forces at work in Satan's work that cannot be dismissed. And, and, and so for you, you're the light of the world. This is why your God talks and your, your faith is really, really important. Because it's easy to say, well, there's, there is no Satan. It's just as easy to say there's no God. Anybody can make those statements. You know, people will look at the church and say, you're crazy for believing this stuff. You can't explain it any other way. That, that this evil that seems to grab hold of, of nations and, and it expands. Now, you know, the time of Satan is short. And so it's his increased activity because there's this fury that's taking place where, you know, the Bible talks about a time where he will spend a thousand years out of activity. And I think what's happening now is this, this fear of what is taking place. And it's increasing. We live in this time. So don't, don't dismiss the fact that, you know, there is, a, there, is, there is a force. So sometimes you go look at people and you go, why can't they just wake up to themselves? Well, they can't. But just through us changing the way we see things, if we would change the way we see things and go, hang on, what, what part do we play? How do we adapt our thinking to be the light of the world? And, and, and what I've said is churches just don't change. And I think churches struggle to change. We, try, we struggle, to, Christians struggle to change, to see how can we adapt to the, the circumstances that we've got right now. I'm coming back to this concept of light of the world. You know, we're going to have these market carols and the people are so excited. Uh, Cassie, we're working with her. She's working at, at developing this, like, almost like the car boot sale. And somehow or other, I thought about it. And I thought, when I looked at that scripture, I thought, what's the connection point? You know, they're not running into church to say, sing us the songs that you've got in church. But they will want to come and sing carols. We've, got, we've still got a society here that, that knows carols. We've got family members that go, let's go to the carols. And they'll come to the carols. They will. And then there is, there, in the carols is the story of Jesus. We are the light of the world. That story must, that meta-narrative, okay, God's overarching story, the, the, the reason why they landed in captivity was because they forgot to tell the story to their children's children's children. 
That's why they had so much trouble. And, and they allowed nonsense to come into to the priesthood. They allowed idols to come in there and everything else. It was because they forgot the, the meta narrative, the big story. And for us, the story, it, it all, everything is going to point to Jesus Christ. And, and for us, this is why. This, we, we've got a connection point. It's still there. If there's one thing that this community will come to that has anything to do with the story, then the story that they need to put in their lives, it's going to be the carols. We can do this. We can do something amazing. I, I actually don't even think we should worry about food. I think we should let just food trucks take care of all that. I, I actually think we need to concentrate on what we do well because, and we need to think about families. We, we, our mind needs to be off ourselves and our problems and, and be thinking, we can't change the way we do things. Well, it can't, it, 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 we need to change because we're no longer living in 1964 when the church was seen in the light that it was seen in. And yet, these people are going, why, why are you taking care of us? You know, they, will, they will actually see us. They will ask questions. And, and, and if we, we make this connection, because I've never been a fan of carols. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's just, that's just not me. My wife, she drives me crazy sometimes with Christmas time. <laughs> she loves Christmas, loves everything about Christmas. We need to do the same. We actually need to realise that this is still part of our society. It hasn't gone away. It may have been increasing in secular concepts, but the story, the heart of it, Christmas, it's still there. It hasn't gone away. And, and for us, this is, this is still our connection point into what's going on all around us. And I, and I think I, I want us to look forward to this going to be, you know, December the 8th. And Joan, I don't know where, Joan's up the back. She's, isn't she awesome? Look at this, she's up the back. Yay, Joan! She is awesome. Just love that lady. She's, she's so excited. She's going to recruit you to sing in stuff that you never thought you'd want to sing. <laughs> you need to get your half out of the tree. Because the people are going to ask you, come on, sing us that song. Sing the song of Zion. We need to get together and care for what matters. That we've got this moment in time and that God would call us to see this. But I think let's, as a church, we're going for let's pray to God for our community. You know, that, that, this is what God said, if you pray, you're going to prosper. You pray for the, this, this community. But also, the, that his, it's his story. Tell his story. I mean, sing the, sing the carols. I mean, you know, this is like, so, so I'm, not actually, I'm not actually pushing the carols because I love them. I just know that there's something, there's a, still a connection point. And God uses, well, God will use what we do. And we need to focus on this. But also, I think, I, th I think if I was to give you just one thing that God is saying to us and has said to me in this church, encourage your families. Encourage your families. The family that you've got right now. Whatever family you're in. Be the light of the world in the family that you're in. Because I think this is going, going, this is going to have um, a ripple effect. You know, deal with the, deal with you, deal with the dramas you've got. You know, but encourage your family. Step up to the plate, Team Jesus. Actually, look at family is important. Um, it's not decreasing in value; it's increasing in value. And I think this has everything to do with God's hand upon what's taking place. So as much disruption as there is that you can say that you look at and you go, I wish all this stuff wasn't, you know, like this in the world right now. I mean, just the problems everywhere. Come back to family. Your job right now, what has God given you? Your station in life in this moment, God's got his hand on your life. God didn't give up 
control. That's his job. Our job, our job is to realize that we belong to him. And he belongs to us. And so for us as a church, I think this is, this is something to look forward to. I'm, 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 I'm super pumped. Um, and I think this is, can you tell? Because other, otherwise I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm sitting by the rivers of Babylon and I'm going to cry. I, I don't want to do that. You know, we go, let's do this. God's in control. We are, we are. This is what's happening. And, and, and God will take care of us. Let's pray. Almighty God, there's so much I don't understand. But I do know that your scripture is true. And that God, your story is true. And the more we look at it, the more we realize your timeline is important. And the seasons that we're in. God, all of us have family of one shape or form or another. Enable us to see what you see. Enable us to be the encouraging light in families. And Lord, that this community would see something that's taking place here and think of you. And God, just as a church, that we would, be, we would not be divided, that we would be united um, in, a, in a really good way. And God, bless the families of this church. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Everybody's family. Everybody here. God, bless us in ways that we re- realize you are helping us. In Jesus' name, amen.